character trait acquisition. You should know by now, as a keen student of my work, that the narcissist seeks the prime aims. The pursuit of the prime aims is either unconscious, where lesser or mid-range narcissist, which those narcissists being the majority, the vast majority of narcissists on the planet. The pursuit of the prime aims is conscious, where the narcissist is greater or ultra. What are the prime aims? Briefly, control and fuel, residual benefits and character traits. Control is control through the three assertions of control over anybody that comes on the narcissist radar. Fuel is in effect the emotional output of an individual provoked by something the narcissist has said or done or hasn't said or hasn't done. Fuel is the lifeblood of the narcissist. Not only does it signal control, but it also allows the narcissist to function by way of the glue that keeps the construct together. Residual benefits cover anything from the physical enjoyment of sex, having somebody to iron your shirts, cook your meals, wipe your backside if you're infirm and old, give you your medication, provide money to you, shelter, give you use of car, a job, access to contacts, and so forth. And then we have character trait acquisition. Many people struggle to understand what this means. Hence, I'm going to explain for you. Character trait acquisition arises because the narcissist has no boundary between himself and others. The narcissist has a sense of entitlement, no sense of accountability, and manipulates. All of those factors link into the use of character traits, acquiring things from other people for the narcissist's use. That use occurs essentially in two ways. Character traits assist with the construction of the construct. The construct enables the narcissist to imprison the creature and acts, if you will, as a beacon to attract others and their fuel. The construct is a fabrication that occurs as part of the creation of a dynamic and fluid outward appearance within certain parameters, which I will return to, for the purposes of keeping the true self locked away, representing this false self, which is the construct, to present it to the world to enable the narcissist to appear to fit in, to be able to cope, and as a mechanism of drawing people to the narcissist so that the narcissist is able to extract fuel, assert control, and gain those residual benefits, and also acquire more character traits. The construct is essentially a fabrication for lesser and mid-range narcissists, although there may be some slight genuine elements in there, and there are more genuine elements when it comes to the greater and the ultra, but there are still aspects of fabrication there also. A genuine aspect of the construct, for example, would be intelligence. So, for instance, although some narcissists, of course, use a fabrication to make themselves appear more intelligent than they are, some narcissists are genuinely very intelligent. And therefore, they demonstrate that intelligence to the outside world in a genuine way. Other narcissists might actually dumb down their intelligence and therefore the dumbed down outward appearance is done for the purposes of achieving the prime aims. A useful example of that is Boris Johnson whose construct is one of this bumbling, lovable, 
slightly roguish, tousled-haired individual. He's a bright man, and he consciously creates, as part of his construct, this idea of bumbling Boris. And it works extremely well with regard to controlling people, deflecting accountability, drawing fuel, other character traits, asserting control, and gaining those residual benefits. Some narcissists make themselves appear more intelligent than they actually are. A good example of that might be a lower mid-range cerebral narcissist who is able to garner bits and pieces of information about certain subjects and does just enough to make him seem like he is a sustained expert on those topics. So the construct is either unconsciously generated by lesser and mid-range narcissists, and then is an amalgam of conscious and unconscious construction by greater and ultra-narcissists. The construct is the false self, used to enable the narcissist to fit in, to assert control, and garner those prime aims. The construct is created unconsciously or consciously from aspects of other people. This artifice in, acts to keep the creature hidden on the inside and creates its appearance on the outside almost like something shiny to a magpie to attract people to the narcissist. Accordingly, the construct has to be made of something and it's made of shards, fragments, pieces, plates, slivers of everybody else. In a way, think of it like a huge mirror that has been smashed. You'll have some large pieces, some very small pieces, little fragments, flecks, great big shards. And what the narcissist does is, if everybody else is a smashed mirror, the narcissist will take that large shard from her over there and move it into his own construct. That very small fleck from her over there. A chunk from him, a sliver from the, her, and so on and so forth. So if you envisage that all of the appliances are smashed mirrors and therefore pieces of them, varying in size and degree, can be acquired by the narcissist and placed into their own construct. Fuel is the glue that holds this construct together. And that is why, when the narcissist is well fueled, the construct holds. So the narcissist functions, fits in, operates a facade, is able to behave benignly and draw other people. But when fuel drops, parts of the construct fall away. And that is when you start to see through to what might lie underneath. That is why when you threaten the narcissist's control, in effect, you cause a dent in the construct. If you wound... Not only are you causing a, a hole to be broken in the construct, you're robbing the narcissist of that fuel, that glue, so other bits of the construct will fall away. And that's why an immediate and intense response is required from the narcissist in order to get that precious fuel again to seal the holes that you've created through your wounding. So the construct amounts to shards and fragments and pieces, etc., purloined from other people and put together using fuel as glue to create the outward appearance of the narcissist, to create what it is that you see. How, then, is this done? As I've explained, for most narcissists, this will be done unconsciously, and they don't see that what they're doing, and nor do they see that... It is part of somebody else that they're using. Greater and ultra narcissists are aware, but they're <clears throat> but with a greater and ultra narcissist, 
there are certain aspects which are much more genuine. But there still has to be embellishment, i.e. expanding the construct by the use of material elsewhere. So, let's say, for example, the narcissist has a friend who's just been on holiday to Rome. The friend returns and explains, I had a wonderful time in Rome. I went to the tomb of the unknown soldier, flipped a coin at the Trevi Fountain, uh, stood on the Spanish steps and had my photograph taken. I went to the Pantheon. I walked along past all of that ancient history as I ended up at the Colosseum, which was smaller than I thought it would be, and it was a very hot day. But what an amazing trip I had. Absolutely fantastic. And the narcissist, having asked the question, how was your holiday, receives fuel from the enthused non-intimate secondary source talking about Rome and how interesting it was. That narcissist attends a dinner party that night and unconsciously starts to talk about the, the holiday that he had in Rome. He passes off his friend's experience as his own. So those aspects of the friend, let's call him friend A, are acquired by the narcissist. His knowledge about Rome, where he went, what the weather was like, the people that he met, the things that he ate. And then the narcissist utilizes that experience when he talks to friends B, C and D at the dinner party and passes it off as if he were the one that had been in Rome. This enables a, if you will, shiny outward appearance. He's a functioning individual that has been away on holiday. The friends are impressed. Their admiration, their murmurs of approval, all provide him with fuel. Another method of character trait acquisition comes to purloining the success of others on the basis that it is actually the success of the narcissist. This is commonly done in two spheres. Parents doing it in relation to the achievements of their children and people obtaining the credit of others in a work situation. This is done through a sense of entitlement, no emotional empathy for the person whose success is being stolen, no boundary recognition, and seeing that person as an extension of the narcissist. So, where, for instance, a child is a particularly accomplished athlete, the parent will talk about, oh, she got her stamina from me, or she achieved it because of my coaching. In the mind of the narcissist, the child's success is their success and becomes bolted onto the construct. The child achieves excellent examination results. Oh, he gets his brains from me. Yes, as a consequence of all of the extra revision, I ensured that he did. He makes me, he will, he's going to do this, he's going to do that, he makes us proud. Of course, that is just the appearance of caring and being proud. What's really going on is the narcissist acquiring, sequestrating the academic success of their child and passing it off as in fact as their own. It's because of me. You're only clever because of me. You're only good at football because of me. In a work situation, this will be taking credit for the success of a team or passing off somebody else's work as your own. Character trait acquisition is regularly seen within artistic fields where the narcissist essentially steals the work of another. It might be blatant, out-and-out -out plagiarism, usually with lower echelon narcissists. With the more cultivated narcissism, this occurs as a consequence of the narcissist taking the essence of somebody else's work and rejigging it building upon it, possibly improving upon it, and not crediting anybody else with the basic ideas or premise. No, it was all my own work. I thought of it from the very beginning. In other ways, character trait acquisition might be very blatant in terms of copying the way that you dress, the way that you wear your hair. You might notice that you have a particular friend who, as soon as you buy a new style of dress, they go and buy the exact same one, and then accuse you of copying them. You buy some new shoes, they have the same ones. You change your hairstyle, so do they. And this is the very obvious mirroring and mimicry that a narcissist will engage in. The narcissist will see 
that what you do garners approval and uh, admiration and comments of that looks good on you. And therefore, the narcissism says, people are responding to her new hairstyle. We should get the same one. Of course, the narcissist doesn't think that they are copying because the narcissism will not let them believe that. Other instances of character trait acquisition would include acquiring your hobbies. This accords with the mirroring that's often demonstrated at the beginning of a, a relationship, be it romantic or social, where the narcissist claims to be interested in, for instance, cross-country skiing and goes and buys all of the kit, but they may well fall into the situation of all the gear and no idea. You will notice that the, the individual suddenly likes the music that you like, has the culinary taste that you like, has the same film and book tastes. All of that is acquiring your character traits and bolting them onto the narcissist. And in that instance, that can be utilized not only to look impressive to other people in the fuel matrix, but of course it's the mirroring that is undertaken by us to control you as the potential intimate partner primary source. Part of you is stolen by us and bolted onto our construct and passed off as being us. It can also include, for instance, adopting speech, mannerisms, aping intelligence, even copying movements. Character trait acquisition occurs with all narcissists in varying degrees in order to bolt onto the construct, which is central to the existence and survival and thriving of the narcissist. It is what you do, it is what you say, it is what you have. It is your intelligence, your looks, the places that you've been, the places that you intend to go to, your successes at work, in life, in academia, on the track. The narcissist will support particular teams, not because they have an inherent interest in that team, but because the success that, say, that football team achieves is seen as the success of the narcissist. When a particular footballer slams the ball into the back of the onion bag, the watching narcissist cheers. Doesn't cheer because he's genuinely enthused by the fact that his team has scored a goal. He scored that goal. He was the centre forward that put it in the back of the neck, back of the net, and in his mind, the success of that goal scorer becomes his. The success of that team is his to then brag about my team are top of the league. My team has won the Champions League trophy. You may know about these people. We call them glory supporters who flip from side to side. For years, they supported Liverpool. Then they supported Manchester United when they started to become successful. Then they moved to Chelsea. And then latterly, they've moved to Manchester City. And they've probably shifted back to Liverpool again because they won the Premiership and some European trophies recently. Those individuals, not always, but often they're narcissists because they're engaging in character trait acquisition. The success of that team is instrumental to their construct and because of compartmentalization, hypocrisy, but their blindness to their behavior, they see nothing wrong from switching from team to team to team to team. And invariably, in certain instances, they'll even deny that they used to support Chelsea because of the revision of history. The construct has fluidity, but it depends upon the relevant school of narcissist. So the fluidity operates within certain parameters. So there'll be narrower parameters for the less evolved narcissists so that they can only have a construct which moves between two particular places. A more evolved one is much more of the complete chameleon because of increased intelligence, the evolved narcissism, they are much more able to acquire character traits from lots of different places and morph into different people. They are able to shapeshift far more effectively. A lower echelon narcissist, we're talking about lower lesser, middle lesser, possibly upper lesser A and upper lesser B, lower mid-range, sometimes the middle mid-rangers, they operate within certain parameters. So, you won't have those narcissists that will be one day a professor of archaeology, then claiming to be something big in the tech world, then being a prominent athlete. 
Instead, their character trait acquisition will appertain towards one particular occupation, but would be acquiring little successes here and there from other people, passing off things such as new clothing, uh, new hairstyles, makeup, possibly acquiring the places that that person has been, shifting football teams, etc. So there is a fluidity amongst all narcissists, but the extent of that fluidity and how that matches with the way that the construct shapeshifts depends upon the school of narcissism. But ultimately, this construct exists as a consequence of character trait acquisition, which is done for the majority of narcissists unconsciously and other narcissists with a degree of unconscious but a lot of conscious activity built upon existing genuine achievement. But all narcissists operate a construct. Some have been built from genuine traits, which are then embellished and extra ones added on on top. Other narcissists, the construct is completely fabricated. And it is there to imprison the creature and act as a beacon to draw fuel, to assert control, to gain other character traits, and to gain residual benefits. And the traits in this construct shift and change, dependent upon need and the inherent ability of the narcissist to achieve this. Accordingly, that is character trait acquisition. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.